Good morning, everyone. I'd like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to speak today. <laughs> On behalf of my colleagues, I'll be presenting our study entitled The Impact of Adding Aspirin to Direct Oral Anticoagulant Therapy Without an Apparent Indication. So the direct oral anticoagulants, which include apixaban, dabigatran, adoxaban, and rivaroxaban, are increasingly used in clinical practice for indications that include uh, the prevention of strokes for patients with non-valvular atrial fibrillation, and the treatment and prevention of venous thromboembolic disease, which includes deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. The antiplatelet agent, aspirin, is also uh, commonly seen in clinical uh, practice. It is used for the primary prevention of heart attacks, strokes, and colorectal cancer. It's used for the uh, thromboprophylaxis uh, in certain blood disorders, such as polycythemia vera. And it's also used to prevent thrombosis uh, with, for patients with certain cardiac devices, like mechanical heart valves. For uh, patients with established uh, vascular uh, disease, uh, aspirin is used in the secondary pre prevention of thrombosis uh, for patients with known coronary artery disease, peripheral arterial disease, or uh, carotid artery disease. In recent years, there's been an, a growing uh, body of evidence that raises the question, is adding aspirin doing more harm than good for certain patients? Specifically, there's a question of uh, if aspirin is increasing the rates of bleeding without uh, protecting patients from adverse thrombotic outcomes. And this has specifically been a concern for patients that are on full dose uh, anticoagulation. So this led to our uh, research question, which is among patients on a direct oral anticoagulant for atrial fibrillation or venous thromboembolic disease without a clear indication for the addition of the aspirin, what is the impact of taking the aspirin? So this is a diagram that reflects our study design. So we had patients newly starting on a direct oral anticoagulant for the diagnoses of either atrial fibrillation or venous thromboembolic disease, for which we had at least three months of follow-up data. We excluded patients who had a history of heart valve replacement or a recent uh, myocardial infarction. We analyzed the rate of uh, aspirin use uh, for the remaining patients and then performed a one-to-one -one propensity match to compare two uh, cohorts of 639 uh, patients based on uh, their aspirin uh, use. So in total, we identified over 2,000 patients, and approximately a third of those patients were on aspirin without a clear indication in addition to their direct oral anticoagulant therapy. Our two propensity match groups were similar in their demographics, their reason for being on a direct oral anticoagulant, their uh, direct oral anticoagulant dose and the type of drug they used, their bleeding risk as reflected by the has blood score, which we modified to exclude the aspirin component, and uh, their comorbidities. We followed patients for an average of about 15 months. So uh, this table shows our uh, results. In the left uh, column, you can see the patients uh, that were on direct oral anticoagulant uh, monotherapy, so just the direct oral anticoagulant alone. In the central column, you can see uh, the 639 patients that were on combination therapy with the direct oral anticoagulant with the addition of aspirin. Uh, the top line reflects the rate of new thrombosis per 100 uh, patient years of follow-up. And the rates were very similar uh, between the two groups, 2.35 uh, thrombotic events per 100 patient years in combination therapy compared to 2.23 uh, with direct oral anticoagulant therapy alone. Uh, combination therapy, however, however, was associated with an increased rate of uh, bleeding at uh, 39.5 compared to 32.3. And this uh, result was statistically significant for uh, clinically relevant non-major bleeding uh, with an 18.7 uh, uh, rate per 100 patient years compared to 13.5 uh, with combination therapy compared to 13.5 uh, for DOAC uh, monotherapy. We also saw a significant increase in uh, non-major bleeding uh, with combination therapy compared to direct oral anticoagulant uh, monotherapy alone. Uh, the other uh, specific uh, types of uh, bleeding categories, we did not see a significant uh, difference. We did see um, increased rate of emergency room visits and hospitalizations in the patients on uh, DOAX with aspirin, uh, but uh, this did not reach uh, statistical significance in comparison to uh, the patients on uh, direct oral anticoagulant uh, therapy alone. So in conclusion, uh, we found that aspirin and direct oral anticoagulant therapy uh, led to an increased uh, rate of bleeding, 
especially clinically relevant non-major bleeding. And uh, that was, um, we did not observe a difference in uh, thrombotic events. These findings need to be uh, confirmed in uh, larger uh, studies. Uh, but until such data is available, clinicians and patients uh, should uh, continue to balance the relative uh, risks and benefits of adding uh, aspirin uh, to their direct oral anticoagulant therapy. Uh, further uh, research uh, needs to uh, evaluate uh, key uh, subgroups to see if any uh, particular uh, population may uh, benefit from uh, combination therapy uh, compared to DOAC therapy alone. So I'd like to thank uh, everybody involved uh, in making this uh, study uh, possible, including the Michigan Anticoagulation Quality Improvement Initiative, and I'd be uh, happy to take any uh, questions at the end. At the end. end.